Mpenzi mtazamaji kama ndio kwanza nafungua channel yako ya TF TV tafadhali subscribe ili wewe mwanzo kupata video zetu mbali mbali za ndani na nje nchi. Share video hii bila kusahau kudondosha komenti yako kwani ni muhimu sana. Most African countries and governments are facing a number of consultant engineering related challenges as well as opportunities. And please allow me to highlight some of them. First, project completion delays, exorbitant tender prices, corruption in big engineering tenders, and protracted, protracted disputes are not uncommon in Africa. And this is in spite of the practice of using FIDIC contracts which spell out allocation and management of risks, as well as roles and responsibilities of the main parties. The question then is, where do we go wrong? And on this matter, I think there is need to review some elements of the FIDIC project template. In particular, the template seems to be inadequate when it comes to guaranteeing accountability for mistakes and weaknesses of consulting engineers. And this loophole apparently leaves room for negligence and subsequent failures to complete projects on schedule and with the right quality and thereby generating immense losses to the client, including governments. FIDIC procedures for payments and resolution of disputes is seemingly long and costly as it gives unnecessary space to consulting engineers to unilaterally stop work and even save a contract. So what do I want to say? Let us put our heads together to find a lasting solution to these challenges including late payment of contract sums by the clients, of course, which government stands out, as well as late and non-payment of due taxes. Second, there are also significant variations in the quality of consulting engineering and allied technical education across Africa whose quality often does not meet the requirements of the job market. This is made worse by difficulties of retaining talented consulting engineers in Africa. Quite a good number of top consulting engineers have moved out of the continent in search of greener pastures. Local consulting engineers often face unequal access to funding compared to their foreign competitors. I think this is now time for FIDIC projects templates to deliberately provide for local content and PPP projects as instruments to provide local consulting engineers to beef up technological adaptation and accumulate skills and experience. Similarly, they lack modern equipment and funding for research and development to be able to create Africa-specific engineering solutions. And I therefore implore you to harness FIDIC to step up efforts to standardize and enhance the practice of consulting engineering. Let me give an example from Tanzania. In 2022, a staggering $160 million worth of consultancy contracts, which is about 58%, were monopolized by nine foreign firms, leaving a meager $115 million, which is 42%, to be shared among 39 local consulting firms. This glaring gap between foreign and local firms underscores the urgent need for action in capacity building. And I urge FIDIC to leverage its dedicated capacity building committee to enhance the skills, knowledge, 
and capabilities of consulting engineering firms and professionals. And by doing so, FIDIC can fulfill its primary functions of capacity building and advocacy, fostering a more equitable and inclusive landscape for consulting engineering firms across borders. Let me also take this opportunity to urge this conference to consider the potential role of innovation hubs that have sprouted out in many African countries as a platform for consulting engineers to collaborate and share innovative ideas and develop homemade solutions. It is my sincere hope and wish that this conference will also spark greater collaboration of consulting engineers across Africa and foster knowledge sharing. This is, to my knowledge, in line with the FIDIC objectives to promote high standards of engineering professionalism, quality and ethical conduct, among others. The massive infrastructure projects being undertaken across Africa, alongside the drive to implement the Africa Free Continental Trade Area, are in my view fertile grounds and opportunities for consulting engineers to put your knowledge to good use. And finally, I think I concur with the Dar es Salaam Regional Commissioner's view that uh, Consulting engineers, I think, need to re-engineer their work in the face of the environmental crisis uh, and its effects uh, that we are facing all over the continent. Right now, because we are in the business of promising ourselves things, we have also promised ourselves that we have something called Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Good. On paper, you can't fault it. But tell me, engineers, how are we going to trade amongst ourselves if we don't have the right infrastructure? I remember talking to a friend of mine who is in the poultry business in Liberia. He put up a farm in Liberia, and he had his first major product to transport to Sierra Leone, he lost 90% of his eggs courtesy of the bad roads. So that when you want to trade, you must also have good infrastructure. Africa continental free trade area is only going to have meaning when we have supportive infrastructure. Students of history will remind us Slightly over 60 years ago, when many of our African countries were regaining their political independence, the promises that we gave to ourselves included, among other things, that we would improve infrastructure. Almost in every country, the leaders said we would have good roads, the question that we ask today, do we have good roads? The leader said we would have good railway systems. The question is, do we have good railway systems? We also promised ourselves that we would have electricity. Do we have sufficient electricity? We said that we would have all the things that would improve the quality of our lives in the Department of Infrastructure, and we went on a training spree in our universities, whether it was the University of Dar es Salaam or the University of Ghana or Unsuka in Nigeria or Botswana. We started training our engineers in every sector. The question is, have those efforts yielded the fruits that we desire, or we still fall far short? When mobile telephony came, we embraced it, and we continue to embrace it in the knowledge 
that going forward we must have the kind of connectivity that will enable us to communicate. Yet the reality in Africa is that even in that area of mobile telephony, we are still lagging behind. When I travel from Nairobi, Kenya, after one hour in Tanzania, I begin to struggle with connectivity. When you travel from South Africa and you arrive in Botswana, you begin to struggle with connectivity. Only one month ago, mobile connectivity was disrupted in West Africa. And two weeks ago, it was disrupted in East Africa. That is how our infrastructure is. Yet, even in the face of all that, we never give up. Tiff TV na kupatia video mbali mbali kutoka ndani na njia nchi. Tafadhali endelea kutufuatilia kupitia channel yetu ya Tiff TV, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter na Instagram. Bila kusahau kudondosha comment yako kwani ni muhimu sana. Tiff TV tupo kijamii